This is Fred Beck from Fred Doyle's High Team today. I'm very lucky to be joined by once again Pat Barrett. So, Pat, how are you been, mate? I'm good, thank you. Tired, but I'm good. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think most hardcore UK British boxing fans are going to be quite tired. Um, so, before we talk about the Fury and Wilder fight that happened in last night or late this morning, I just want to touch on your Black Flash promotion show that you had last night. How did that go? Because I believe you had Connor Ward and Niall Brown on that card. It went, you know what? It went very well. Um, considering where I did the show, I did the show in the northeast, um, you know, just before Newcastle, Durham sides. Um, so really taking the show up there at the Rating Arena and putting it on there, it was pretty good. I've done well. Do you find that it's quite a lot? Ni- it's a lot nicer to see that for your prospects getting out after seeing such a long layoff. No, it's just it's just the way I do it. Really, I think. I take my prospects on the road um, where a lot of people want to keep it in their own area so they can sell more tickets and probably more value of money for the promoter. But then it's also, if you're talking about a kid's future, it's also better off taking them on the circuit so you can build a fan base for them. So they'll have a fan base in Newcastle. They'll have a fan base in, like the fighting on the Liverpool show next. They'll have a fan base in Liverpool. And they'll have a fan base in Manchester, plus the nice kids as well. Oh, okay, that's quite smart, actually. It's quite good, quite good thinking. And say you have a, your prospect, Conor Ward, I think you know he's 4 0. How many fights do you kind of plan for him to have on the, the small hall circuit before you try and start getting him on the, the BT route of Frank Warren at all? Well, you know what? The way I see it now, I've been going for like six years. And um, what is really big, uh, big is only something that you need exposure for, like TV. And you know, you, sometimes in life, you don't have to look for things. It, it will find you. And the way I see it doing it now, I think if I have a very strong corner and I have six, seven champions in that corner, I think it's enough to attract that will come to me. And as I said before, I want to be the best small. I'm not trying to be big. I'm not trying to be like Frank Warren. I'm not trying to be like Eddie Earn. I'm not trying to go down them scales. I'm doing it for what I've got, okay? A lot of these kids now would be journeymen because people make them into what they are. Yeah, it's like grooming kids. Yeah, people tell them they can't make it. Oh, you can't sell tickets. Oh, you can't do this. Why don't you just go on the road? And they're just thinking, well, that's my last option. I love boxing, so I will do that. Yeah, but nobody's not saying, well, you know what? I'll sell tables for you. I'll sell tickets for you. I'll invest in you because I think you can be good. And that's what's lacking today. This game is dying. Slowly but surely, it's dying boxing. Really? Do you think so? Boxing's dying? I think it... But, you know, internally, yeah, if you see behind the scenes of boxing, I think you'd have a different view. I think talking to you and looking at boxing and looking at fighters, you don't see what it's like internally. You don't know what it's like to be a promoter. You don't know what it's like to be a manager. Yeah, it's okay being a trainer. Even trainers don't know what it's like internally because when you've got to get kids matched up and you've got to get fights for them and you've got to build them up, yeah. I mean, people are saying it's 40 shows in one month in October. There was 40 shows in one month, okay? Yeah. When people say journeymen were drying up, you couldn't even get journeymen. You know, it's, it's so damn lame that even when you get journeymen now, Somebody was be telling you to, oh, you can't knock them out because we need them to be on the next show. I mean, and, and I've never heard so much nonsense that you have to pay a fighter to not be what it is. I've never done that, and I refuse to do that. And if somebody said that to me, I'd tell them where to go. Because I'll tell you now, if I'm paying a journeyman to fight my lad, then he's got to be prepared to fight. Yeah. Alternatively, I'll find somebody that can fight. And... This is why on my show, I had a lot of foreign journeymen on my show, for, not me, because they come to fight, you got the pick of the bunch, but sometimes it's it's very hard to cons- keep a consistent. So now I'm, I'm phoning around the country and making more contacts with different kind of people, um, Spanish people, um, Russian people, um, Italian people, just in order to keep the to keep what I've got going on because it's, it's gone really bad now I'm telling you do you think it's going to get any better at all getting easier or do you think we're trying to stay the same then Pat do you know what 
to be quite honest with you, I'm not looking at anything else. I'm only looking at what I've got to try and build for myself. Um, this game is a very difficult game. And if people do think it's easy, they need to think again. OK, I see what you mean. I mean, all the fans are watch boxing. And then I guess you have the other half where the managers and what you were saying, the promoters as well. But see the inside of boxing and see how, see how difficult it is. Um, and one fight that I'm last night as well, we wanted the Fury and Wilder conversation. That definitely did give boxing a, a big boost. I'm guessing you did wake up for it then at four in the morning. To be quite honest with you, I got in around about that time. I was on the way back from um, the Northeast. So I watched the other fight at the arena, uh, the Smith and Fowler fight. We stayed there to watch that. And then from there, after that fight, yeah, I set off from there and then came back to Manchester. So I was home in time to stay up to watch the fight. So when there's normally a big fight in America, do you normally stay up or do you only wake up at four or three then? Do you stay up or wake up? Um, I'm normally stay up, you know, to be quite honest. Oh, okay. No, I normally wake up because I know I, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, well, a couple of times I've stayed up, but then you kind of are dead when you when blue in the blue and seven o'clock comes and the fight's finished, all the post fight, all the post fight stuff's finished. Yeah, I normally do, normally do wake up. Anyway, when we're going before, if you go back a few days before the fight had happened, who did you have? Who did you pick? Who do you think was going to win then between Fury and Wilder? Oh, Fury. I'm a big Fury fan anyway. I mean, I've known him for a very long time and, you know, I always like what he said. He's, he's always been able to deliver everything that he's ever said. Yeah. And that's from being a kid. Anything that he's ever said and put his mind to it, he's always accomplished what he said and he's done it. And that's what I'm like. So they always like people who say they're going to do something and they go end up doing it. Um, wait, are you there, Pat? The camera's just uh, gone off. Sorry. Oh, I'm just going to call him. I just declined it. They <laughs> call him back in a minute then. Um, yeah, and the end of the, the fight ended up being a uh, pretty good. I think it was a lot more competitive than what everyone thought it would be. Did you think it was going to be that competitive though? Um, do you know what? I, I did because it was Wilder's last chance. Because if Tyson would have beat him this time, it's where he would have gone. Um, so I do know it would have been he was going to give everything he's going to got. But I knew that Tyson always had. He couldn't have done what he did the first time, coming back from nothing, and then did what he did the second time, and then not find it easier, you know, the third time. The third time would be easier with the belief in himself. You know what I mean? No matter what you threw at Tyson, he was taking it because that belief was that this guy can't beat me. He's aware of his punching power. He's always said that. He said it from day one, this guy can bang. Yeah. That's all he's got. He's got a punch. He'll do Paul Wilder. A one trick pony, but then there is the, the best trick in the book, in a way. Um, as well as that, it was that trend, I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying that was one of the best heavyweight fights they've seen in a, in a long time, or one of the best heavyweight fights, kind of our true Gashi and Wars fight, but the heavyweight version. Did you think it was uh, one of the best heavyweight fights you've seen in a while? Well, this one here with uh, Tyson, and I think, it, of course, it was. I think, um, when just with Tyson alone, that made it the best for me because it's what he's shown in the, what he took. I mean, I'm not saying Wilder was holding on because he had no choice, okay? Wilder needed, he needed, he, he knows his career's finished after this. You know, he's been stopped twice now of Tyson. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Drawn once. So, that says it all for me. So that's you, what made it. So Tyson made it interesting for me. Were you surprised or shocked at all when Tyson got knocked down twice in that round? No, because the punch that hit Tyson, Tyson actually moved into that punch as well. It moved into that right hand. It was meant to slip away, but he slipped into it. So it was a double impact. Yeah. But once again, you know what I mean? He broke the barrier. He got up and fought on. And as he said, he's a true warrior. I mean, one thing like Tyson, which always surprises a lot of people, is that lots of boxers, I guess you kind of have to be lucky for this, with probably natural skill but or talent, that he recovers very fast. I mean, when he gets knocked down, I think we saw it in the first world of fight, when he got knocked down in the 12th round, he recovered very, very quickly and started dominating the round. I'm um, just a couple more points on Tyson then. Where do you think he goes from here? I think during the Dillian White fight will be next. Is that his mandatory for Doe VC? Do you know what? I couldn't really speak for where Tyson goes from here at the moment. I just, you know, I'll just follow him and just watch whatever he does. 
Um, I don't, I don't think there's an heavyweight out there what's going to be, be what's going to be better than him anyway to beat him. I'm not a Dylan White, um, not an Anthony Joshua. Um, you know, as much as I like Anthony Joshua, I just think the Tyson Fury that he is today with that mindset is unbeatable. How do you think he matched up against Usyk then? Though, that be that be a class of skill? Tyson's what we call versatile. It's it's, it's not one dimensional, and it can adapt and it can adjust. And it can change. I mean, he's not just a one-dimensional fighter, like like he says, a one-punch opponent. I mean, he can do several things, Tyson. And one of them several things is he can he can box, he can fight, he can he's got footwork, he's got skills. He can turn up to 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 adapt to adjust to whatever fight he's going to be in. Yeah, I can say see what you mean there. He did make he did he did they make those adjustments in the in second Wilder fight and in this fight as well. I don't, I don't want to take too much of time, Pat. I don't want to touch you one more fight, and that was the the Liam Smith and Andy Fowler fight. I mean, what a fight! I think the Echo Arena, the atmosphere. I wish I could have gone there because the atmosphere in that arena was crazy. What were your overall thoughts on the the fight, though, Liam Smith and Andy Fowler? Do you know what? It, it was one of them fights where I just said, "I'm not going to lie." I said it was a 50-50 fight. It could go either way, yeah, and which it did do. So I mean. I mean, I thought Fowler did great. Me, I thought he boxed well for the first so many rounds. It's just going to sustain it. I think the experience shown with Smith, and that's what it was. He just didn't have that little bit more experience. And I don't think they should have pushed him too soon into a fight like that. I think it was, I think it was a bit of a, I don't know. I think they should have given him two more of the fights, built him up a little bit, let him defend that title differently before... I mean, come on, you can't go in with Smith like that with no experience. You've got to have experience. So you think he kind of needed more more seasoning then, basically? Yeah, a lot more seasoning. This is what happens, though. You know what I mean? It's, it's the game. It's the way the game goes. I mean, there's always an exciting fighters, and exciting fighters always get exciting. Oh, sorry, exciting fighters always get invited back in more great fights. More great fights, sorry. And especially when you're in such good fights, the fans always want to see you fight again. Anyway, Pat, thanks so much for time today, mate. Always great talking to you. Have you got anything coming Thank up you. then? Any shows coming up then? And a shout out. Yeah, we've got the 23rd of October. Kylie Skelly fighting for the Commonwealth title. Um, and we've got the 29th of October at the Devonshire House. So we still, we still, we still got at least another two. And we've got November the 20th, 20 summit, 27th. So we've still got three more dates to close the year off with. Yeah, still a very busy, busy man then. Well, I like to keep it that way. Keep the lads active. Yeah, it's more interesting that way. I'll put the Black Flash Promotions Instagram in the link in the description. All right, Pat, until next time then, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Fred. Thanks a lot, bro.